thank you, Brother Buddy and Miss Rachel, for the song service. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, I want you to turn over to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, we'll be looking and jumping from verse 11. Speaking on the subject this morning, God speaks to moms. God speaks to mothers. This 40th chapter of Isaiah is a chapter where God is comforting the people. When as you read verse 11, we can apply that also as God looking after the mothers as well. Verse 11 of Isaiah chapter 40, He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. The 21st century presents some complex problems to those who have chosen to follow the career of motherhood. <coughs> and the mothers of yesterday, they face problems that are non-existent in the mother's lives today. Eliza Morgan says that on this Mother's Day, preachers all across the nation will turn to Proverbs chapter 31. And they will speak glowingly of the perfect woman described there. And I have done that in the past, but I felt like that to speaking to today's mothers, especially those who are uh, have young children in their homes, that this 40th chapter of Isaiah will speak more to the modern day mother than the 31st chapter of Proverbs. 31st chapter of Proverbs says, One who rises while in still night and cares for the poor and her family late into the following night. Elisha says that most of the mothers in the pews, those whom the preacher will idolize on this special day, will want to run and scream to the back door and say, I can't do this. We must face up to the real world of contemporary mothers. In the real world, mothers yell at their children. I know mine yelled at me and she had a right to. Mothers also argue with their husbands. You say, well now, Brother Jackie, we, I don't argue with my husband. I wouldn't be saying that if I were you in God's house today. Because even though in my own household, Donna tries to argue with me, I just shut up and listen. And that's good advice for all of you husbands. But also, the mothers of the day get jealous of the neighbors and they hold grudges, says Morgan. And I like what Morgan also says. She says the mothers of the day are living in the trenches. Now I'm here to tell you, that's where the action is. 
is in the trenches. All, that's where all the dirty work takes place in the real world. And the woman in the trench needs to know that there is hope and joy found in the trenches. Instead of measuring up to Proverbs chapter 31, Miss Morgan says mothers might find more nurture in passages such as Isaiah chapter 40, verse 11, where God is showing and paying special attention to the mothers. God speaks specifically to moms in Isaiah chapter 40. Look there first of all. It says God tends his flock like a shepherd. He carefully watches each of his sheep and protects them from danger. What does a mother do? A mother carefully watches after her children and they, and they will protect them from danger. Then notice secondly, God gathers the lambs in his arms. He is watchful and gentle with the lambs and the mothers are watchful and they're gentle to their children. Notice thirdly, God carries them close to His heart. He loves His sheep and expresses His love with His arms that hold them close. And mothers express their love and hold their, their children in their arms close to their hearts as, as you saw Michelle when she came down. That baby was lying close to her heart. Then fourthly, God leads those that have young because their task is large and important Mothers have God's special attention and leading. You know what? Think about this. When the mother will have been pitted against their teenager's will, she needs a shepherd to show her the best way to proceed. When at 10 o'clock at night you have been up since 5 o'clock in the morning and you still have three more loads of wash to do, uh, before you can go to bed and you have bills to pay, you need a God who will gather you in His arm and offer comfort. And you need to provide your children with spiritual values that you want to pass on to them. You must recognize that you need help and God is that help. In other words, you're not in this mother business alone. God is there with you and, and showing you that uh, He will lead you uh, and help you to uh, offer comfort to your children. You need the help of God. Listen. Make much of the Bible in your personal life. Get yourself, a, I, I, this is a damn tired, I guess, but I'm going to say it anyway. Get yourself a mom's devotional Bible by Zondam Publishing House, Grand Rapids, Michigan, and read the scripture passage that relates to mothers and read the devotions that target mothers' topics from fatigue to monsters in the closet. You can read these passages of scripture and, and Ms. Morgan uh, 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 expounds on those as, as a mother reading those passages in the Scripture. Be familiar with the clause of the prayer. Matthew 6, 6, God's Word says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Listen. Walk by faith, claiming the promises of God. Follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit in your life. And when you are dealing with sadness over the loss of a loved one or the disillusionment of a marriage, it's not what you thought it would be. Just draw nigh to God and lay your head close to His bosom. For He understands. He can comfort. He can help in this time. And young mothers, when you're struggling with a diaper bag over one shoulder and a purse on the other shoulder and a baby in an infant seat carry cradled in your arms and a toddler pulling on your leg, you need someone to guide you along the way. And God is willing to be that leader. God is willing <clears throat> to be the shepherd. You are not alone in your mother in business. God has chosen 
to be your guide. All you have to do is ask Him. You need also the help of your husband and the help of your church. And there's no substitute for public worship. And then, fifthly, dedicate yourself to God. Ms. Morgan says, becoming a mother forces a woman to think about the spiritual values she wants to pass on to her family. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5 says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which that dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Pay attention to the values that Lois and, 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 and Eunice are teaching Timothy, the mother and the grandmother, and they are, are sending him forth as a servant of Jesus Christ. They taught him to be a man of immeasurable unselfishness. They taught Timothy that he had the capacity for general devotion. They taught him that he was to be warm-hearted and loyal. They taught him that he was possess possess charm and gentleness with tenderness and patience. They taught him to be willing to sacrifice himself without reservation to the cause of Christ. And these are all values. Uh, young mothers that you can instill in your children that you are raising in the home. These qualities are such that only a dedicated mother and grandmother could bestow upon a son. Let me close by saying this. Perhaps the greatest contribution that you as a mother will make to the kingdom of God will be in the child or children you raise for the glory of God. May God bless you mothers with the faith and grace that you need in serving Him today and down through the years at the post of your duty that God has given to you. You know, mothers are special. My mother's about five two, five three. And when she was instilling me in some of the values that I have spoken about today, even though she was short in stature, when I looked at her, she was about seven feet, nine inches tall. I could never figure out why she sacrificed the way she did. For me. You see, I came along, my little brother and me, after the three older kids were on up in, in the years. And the things that mother and dad did for me, they couldn't do for them because dad didn't have the job that he had when I was a young boy. And I'm telling you this to honor my mother today. I have seen that woman sacrifice to give me the things that I wanted. Sacrifice to see that I had the clothes to wear. And I remember my older brothers and sisters say, Mother and Daddy, you're ruining him. <clears throat> and I thought to myself, well, y'all just keep your mouth shut. This is me now. That was y'all then. And I say today, and I love my brothers and sisters, but I'm the only one that's a preacher in the family. So the mother did something right. I said this Wednesday night, and I'm going to pray. When I was in Fort Jackson, South Carolina, in basic training, we got our first weekend pass. I knew what my mother had taught me. I knew the values that she had taught me. But being about 19 years old at that time, I was doing the things that she taught me not to do. And lo and behold, about another week after that, I got a letter from mother telling me all the things that I was doing that she had taught me not to do. And I thought, how in the world does she know that I'm doing these things 400 miles away? And I learned one thing about motherhood. 
mother's help, intuition, that we fathers don't have. God bless you, mothers. I love you as your pastor. I love you as your friend. I hope that you have a great day today with your families. And just have a wonderful Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers. Father, as I pray now and close this service, with an invitation in just a moment, I pray, Father, that what we have said of your comfort and your leadership and your guidance has spoken to the mothers who have children in their homes that they're raising today. Give them the strength and knowledge that they need, Lord, the patience that they need to raise their children in the admonition of the Lord. Bless them in a very special way. And we'll give you the praise for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What number was that? 187. Number 187. We stand and sing. We have a decision to make. I can make that decision from the very first time. say this, you probably had more of raising those kids than those children than I did. But they're both successful and I'm proud of both of them. And I know you can say the same thing about your mothers. So God bless you. Have a good afternoon with your families. No church services tonight. I'll see you again in Wednesday. All right? Brother Tim, all the way to this message. Dear Father, we come to you and find a very special support for the prayers that you give us. Lord, I just thank you for the day that we've had thus far. I 
I was talking with Nick, my mother, and said, What you've done. He may go, I, I, I can hear the bad to be my best. I said, Lord, I thank you for what you've taught me today and the lessons I've learned today in this marriage. And the actual value, I mean, those are my mother, and they say, Father, I wish I was to be with us and God's protectors and people say, as they were uh, back together as a church. Thank you.